The Blue Hills Reservation is right off Route 93 in Milton. That may be both its greatest asset and liability. After all, some just don't take it seriously. It is real hiking. And a lot of people don't think it's real hiking because it's so close to the city. I just saw some sassafras. For Jarrell Ferguson of Hike for Life, Blue Hills is his regular stomping grounds. You can really completely disappear in the Blue Hills. It's about 6,000 acres and, you know, dozens of hiking trails. I call it an island in the city. We're surrounded by six towns, about 650,000 people and 250,000 households within five miles of the Blue Hills. I mean, that's pretty spectacular. Ken Cohen is with the Friends of the Blue Hills. When it comes to hiking, he says, the Blue Hills are no joke. It's a serious, serious place. People train here for some of the biggest peaks of the, in the world on the, on the Skyline Trail. If the Blue Hills offer a generous helping of hiking bliss, the observation tower just might be the stone cherry on top. Absolutely. Spectacular vistas, in some cases 270 degree views all around. You see Boston, you see the inner harbor, the outer harbor, the surrounding towns, and the nature. And I've found out that even people in surrounding towns, some, many people have never been here before. And until they step foot in it, they don't realize what a gem they have in their backyard. We've finally caught up with Ann and Ian Hayes. You see, they are always on the move. Coming up that hillside and not knowing what was gonna be at the top is one of the things that I think drives us to keep on going. The Hayes are participating in the Trustees of Reservations Hike 125 Challenge. The object, to cover 125 miles of trails on trustees' properties over the course of a year. We tried to hit as many different properties as we could, and this was one of the ones we'd never heard of. So it was an inspiration to try to find it and come up here. The Hayes have found their way to the Stavros Reservation in Essex. A short walk up this little hill amounts to a small investment with a big payoff. Magnificent views of the Essex River estuary. You're coming through the woods, you know it's a little bit dark, there's overhanging branches, and you come out here, wide open, a beautiful stone tower, and just these transformative views. Out on the horizon, beyond the marshes, a distant temptation. And the Hayes next stop, Crane Beach, the hidden side. When people think of Crane Beach, they don't think of this, and it's right here. There are miles and miles of trails back in the Crane Beach dunes. It's like a moonscape. I mean, it's otherworldly at times. You can be back here, and the beach will be crowded, and there'll be not a soul here. Towards the end of the trail, on one side you get the bay, on the other side you get the views of the ocean. Uh, it has something for everybody, and there's lots of wildlife, too. Something for everyone, a fitting motto, perhaps, for the trustees' properties, or more broadly, New England itself, this unique and richly endowed corner of the country. All of these great, great hikes through the woods, and by marshes, a little bit of everything. If you want to see birds, you want to see wildlife, you can see that. You want to see beautiful gardens, you can see that. I mean, there, there's really something for everybody. It's mind boggling that these places aren't completely crowded every minute of the day, and it's free. And last year, participants in the Hike 125 Challenge logged more than 20,000 miles on trustees' properties, 85% of which are free or a small fee to members. Really an unbelievable resource. And with that, it's time for us to get out, or at least to say good night. That's Chronicle for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Anthony Everett. Have a great evening. See you back here tomorrow night.